Do you feel that Motown was supportive of the Supremes after Diana Ross left? Now, I have a DVD that a person, if they want to hear this whole story. <laughs> and tell us about the, D- uh, tell us about the DVD. W-W-W. Group, I'm going to repeat that. It's um, www.santel, S-A-N-T-E-L, group, Inc., Inc. one word, dot com. And that's uh, Sandra Newman's website. And you can get uh, Jean Terrell's DVD called Through the Eyes of a Supreme um, through that website. But don't... Don't click on the um, link that's on Jean's biography. Go to the top of the page, and there's a special link that says Eyes uh, DVD. I think that's what it says. And that will take you right to the page to go to, uh, to, to obtain that. Hmm. Thank you, John. I didn't even know that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I've that's looked. Great. I've looked. Well, let's talk a little bit more about other things that you're doing now since you brought that up. Okay. You're working on a jazz album. Yes, but uh, more on that DVD. It t- oh, sure. I talk about every every aspect of the um, from the very beginning, from Ernie Terrell days, uh, all the way through to through the Supreme days, mm-hmm. all the way through through my um, having children, and then back with the Supremes again with Linda and Sherry, mm-hmm. and then all the way till now. And now I'm actually still working on this jazz album, trying to finish it up, and I hope to have it finished um, the first of the year. Who's producing it, Jane? Me. <laughs> you, excellent. I have. Uh, I'm, you know, working in conjunction with other um, two other producers, but um, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm at the helm, you know. Uh huh. Excellent. No, that's what it is and how it should go. Now, what's that like for you? The, is this your first uh, producing uh, uh, role? Yes, it is, although through the eyes also was um, something that myself and Sandra, we just sat down and you know started talking about it, and, and then it evolved from there. So mm-hmm. things like that, you know, it's always, it's always it's something you can do once you've known it, uh, seen it done. Once you've seen how it's done and you've done it over the years, it's easy mm-hmm. that you need uh, others to work with you on it. And you've um, seen you've seen a lot of producers. You you worked with Smokey Robinson. Mm-hmm. What was Smokey like to work with? Oh, he's he's, he's terrific. He's a terrific uh, producer. D- D- different than Frank Wilson? I, I can't remember uh, quite as much as I could because I only worked one little bit with Smokey. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Well, on the Floyd Joy album. On the Floyd Joy album. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's like I worked with um, Frank and on on most of the stuff, I guess. And then after that, um, who else was that? There were several other producers. Oh, Jimmy there. Webb. Jimmy Webb, yeah. What was he like? Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's an individual, that's for sure. That, yeah, I remember. I remember, uh, well, you know how it is. Um, uh, maybe you don't. <laughs> well, uh, Jim, Jimmy Webb to me... You don't me. click with everybody. Mm-hmm. That's, 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 that's for sure. But I had a determination that we're in working with him, he never thought... Uh, I didn't think that he saw my talent or knew thought much of me as a singer, but he said, well, I'll just do it. But he was probably amazed um, once we finished that um, things he turned out as well as it did. It's a remarkable I album. It did. I thought the whole album was really terrific. Yeah, you you did a cross sections of styles. You you, you really rocked out on a number of numbers. Um, your your ballads were absolutely beautiful, and one of my favorite songs of all time is when Brown uh, when does Brown begin. So, so beautiful. Um, oh, how did the Blossoms get involved in... Do, do you know how that they're in the background of that album? Blossoms? The Blossoms. The understanding is that um, uh, you, you did the lead, Mary and Linda did background, and that Jimmy added the Blossoms as sweetening. Were you aware of that? 
No. <laughs> That's what the understanding is. Mm -mm. Yes, and I guess in post-production... It on the album? If what? it doesn't say it on the album, don't believe it. Oh, okay, because it doesn't say it on the album. But so many times they don't say things on the album that, that are a fact. Like the Andantes aren't always identified. Well, did the Andantes... I didn't, I, don't, I didn't work with the Andantes either. Mm -hmm. I did work with other girls, but I didn't work with a certain, certain group. So there were, there were other... Eric, when Miriam and Cindy, when we were doing the album... Um, in that case, or Linda, mm -hmm. um, they they would add two uh, two or more girls with them. Okay. I, I just after a while, I didn't do background with them anymore. I used to do the background with them. Oh. So they would have three pieces that way, three voices. But then after a while, I just concentrated on the lead and didn't do the background. Anymore. Now, now that's important to me. Did you was that on like the first on right on the album? Did you do uh, backgrounds? Mm hmm Yeah, in the first one. Okay, interesting, because, um, okay. And, and then, again, uh, when they thought they needed a certain voice in there, they would bring it in. Because mm -hmm. there's one song that has a very high voice that a girl goes very, very, very high. Is that The Loving Country? No, uh, it's, um, yeah, I can think about it. I'll think about it, which one it is. Um, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, <laughs> yeah, one of them, and then so they use you know vocals like that when they need it. Interesting. I want a very, 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 very high voice, and she's you know. But hmm. on loving country, did you say there was a high voice in there? Yeah, at the very beginning, uh, sing, singing "Come Go With Me." Yeah, I think that's Jean Terrell. That's you. I think so because I have a high voice, but now. It's, this girl has like a mini. Room. Actually, li listen. I've got it. I've got it queued up. Listen. Okay, let me hear. Let me hear. Can you hear? Is that the song you mean? Yeah. But that's not the one I'm talking about. But that that. That's the case of using a very high voice to have a certain object on the song. Uh, any idea who that woman is? No. Because <laughs> we're, deba we're debating. Uh, some people think it's Mary. I don't think it's Mary at all. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> Mary has a low voice. Yeah, she's if, real. If it was anybody, it would have been Cindy. Yeah, because yeah. Because had the high voice. I want to I want to tell you that I saw you at the at the Carter the um, Shoreham Hotel in 1970. And I think you started the show with Brother Love, and I thought I'd die. I didn't. <laughs> and what hotel was this? <laughs> the Shoreham Hotel in Washington, D.C. Oh, okay, sure. It was a wonderful place, and it was very, very close, and I took pictures of you, and there were double exposed, so there were six Supremes in each picture. <laughs> And you still have them. I still have them, absolutely. <laughs> and then I saw you at the Carter Baron, and I think you were with the Temptations. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Tell me, those wo those Washington D.C. summers were very, very hot. How could you how could you perform in those incredibly heavy dresses? I I wish I knew. well you know when you're young you can do a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, you, know, you you don't even feel it. You know, you just move with it. I. I I die in them now, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, man, it's so hot. 